We waged this battle to make sure that millions of Americans in the wealthiest nation on earth finally have the same chance to get the same security of affordable, quality health care as anybody else. That's what this is about. And what the president didn't say, and don't you get the feeling this is the true predicate for all of this? They are just jealous. But like the great philosopher Aubrey Graham says, jealousy is love and hate at the same time. And for good reason. Yesterday, the administration announced that in the first two weeks since the six-month sign-up period began, healthcare.gov had more than 19 million unique visits. And nearly half a million applications were submitted nationwide for health care through both the state and federal marketplaces. I don't know about you, but that sounds like folk are awful interested in signing up. As Obama said on the first day of the Affordable Care Act's rollout, even the most successful ventures are bound to hit a few snags. Consider that just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Apple rolled out a new mobile operating system. And within days, they found a glitch, so they fixed it. I don't remember anybody suggesting Apple should stop selling iPhones or iPads or threatening to shut down the company if they didn't. That's not how we do things in America. We don't actively root for failure. We get to work. We make things happen. We make them better. We keep going. Tell him, Mr. President, stop the hate. Don't throw out the iPod or the iPad with the glitch. Get it fixed and then get the thing to working. You'd think the party of business would understand that. But Republicans are desperate. Did I say desperate? They want to use the perceived failures of the exchange website to justify the crusade that cost us billions and put hundreds of thousands of folk out of work. So their mentality isn't, hey, something's broken, so let's work to fix it. Their mentality instead is, something's broken, let's destroy it. And that mentality is nothing new. Republicans have been preaching that gospel since the days of the old Gipper. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Now there you go again. Republicans don't take Reagan's words to mean, look, Washington is broken, so we need to fix it. Republicans have interpreted Reagan's words to fit their deeds. They've done a self-serving exegesis. What they hear is, Washington is broken, so we must destroy it. When Jesus said, for the poor ye will always have with you, but you will not always have me, he was not excusing poverty as something chronic or inevitable. He wasn't endorsing poverty. He was trying to explain the persistence of an attitude that permitted poverty to go on. Jesus was not absolving us of our duty to take care of the neediest among us. In that same light, I don't take Reagan's words to be an absolution of government's responsibility to take care of the problems we face. Instead, Republicans like Ted Cruz have chosen to interpret those words in the most cynical way possible. Bad, bad preacher you are, Mr. Cruz. They joined the government not to solve the problems facing the neediest Americans. They don't actually want to fix any glitches. They joined the system, aiming to destroy the system as a whole. They're like Samson in the temple, blindly pushing down the pillars, and it's coming crumbling down on all of us. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question, are Republicans bent on the destruction of government as we know it? Text A for yes, text B for no to 677.